So we got the rollback warming up because we have got a truck to tow and it's my own. Uh, we're towing this, there, there's nothing wrong with it. Actually, there kind of is. Uh, we're towing this up to the shop to get the windshield replaced because if many of you have commented and mentioned and pointed out as if I didn't stare at it all day and already know it, uh, my windshield is broke right there. It's actually, I'll, I'll show you. It's broken right here and uh, now it's broken all the way up here and all the way over there. And a lot of people ask how that happened. The rock hit it. People are like, where did the rock come from? The road. Why haven't you fixed it yet? Because there's just more rocks on the road that are going to hit it. But winter is finally slowing down. The heavy road cinder season's coming to an end. And I've also got some long distance trips with this truck coming up and I would prefer not to get a ticket at a scale. So we gotta take it up to the shop to get the windshield replaced. But I gotta go drop it off by myself and pick it up by myself. Which makes it really good that I have a tow truck that can tow my other tow truck. Now on the back of this one, we've got the wheel grids on here. And although that truck there is easy to rear tow from the U-bolt cups, which is super simple, the wheel grids are already on here. So we're gonna use the wheel grids. Cause I don't know if I've ever showed these on this channel. I think maybe only once, but you're gonna see how the wheel grids work on a heavy duty tow truck. The other thing you may notice is that I took the Zack lift off. And for those that are newer here, yes, this whole Zack lift wrecker unit just like comes off. You put the outriggers down, put the landing gear down, drive out from underneath it, you know, once you like unconnect some stuff. Uh, and then you're a normal fifth wheel truck again to go hook to normal, where are they? Fifth wheel trailers that I have laying around here and go do trucking stuff. So that's a quick release system. You see all the connections right here in the front. Uh, it takes 10 minutes to go from full on wrecker to fifth wheel truck. People have asked about lights and all that. I do have my tail lights and all that right here. Uh, I have mud flaps that drop in over here and uh, are your mud flaps. And then the reason this right here is all cut out in this truck and opened up is because that down tube of the boom slides right into here to tuck everything up nice and close when you're a wrecker. But we don't need that right now because the next thing we got to do is hook to that low bed and do some low bed hauling, which is why I pulled the wrecker body off. So we've got our truck backed up to our truck. We're going to pull some stuff out, hook some stuff to some other stuff and get this thing ready to tow. First thing we got to do is get our wheel grid set up. I'm remembering that I did actually show these in a video and I remember that I did say what a total pain in the ass they are. That's because they are. But they're also so freaking handy for some stuff too, which is kind of the frustrating thing. So put our pins over here. This is our scoop right here. It comes out, goes over here. Now we're gonna pull this pin out. And I'm remembering that I didn't grind that little burr off that was on this thing. It doesn't let it slide all the way through. So, we need to pull this out here. See, it doesn't, oh, it, that's weird. Now it does want to go to the last hole. Last time it wouldn't. Huh. Slide our winch out of the way. And we stick our pin in here. Um, all right, now. We got one bar that's gonna go next to the tire. We'll go do the other one. I leave these on the truck until I absolutely have to take them off for something. And then I take them off and I leave them off until I absolutely have to put them on for something. Cause they are so freaking heavy and such a total pain to install and remove. This, this center section right here, that like the part that stays on the wheel lift the whole time is it's heavy, heavy. So the only way to really take it off and on by yourself is to disassemble all these parts and do them individually. And uh, then even then that center piece is like all a guy can do to get it on or off there by himself. So I use the wheel grids for absolutely everything I can until I have to take them off for something to use the forks. And then I use the forks for absolutely everything I can until I have to put the wheel grids back on for something. And granted, they, you know, I like have to have to wheel grid some most stuff, but like on this truck, it has 
and a very easily exposed U-bolt, so you could just U-bolt cup and done. But since the wheel grid's already on this truck, we're using the wheel grids. So now we lower this down. Give it a little bit of out here. And I have to get in my truck over there. Well, this one of my trucks and back up to that one of my trucks to suck it up tight. Cause this thing doesn't have enough throw in it to get all the way out there. Now that we are backed up to it, put our gloves back on. So I think people comment a lot about me wearing my gloves when I get back in my truck and uh, not taking them off first. And they're like, your gloves are to keep your hands clean. Now you're just getting the inside of the truck dirty. Defeats the whole purpose. No, the gloves are to protect my hands from smashes and abrasions and such things. And uh, yes, they get dirty. And then, I guess I could scoot this in one hole on this truck. And then once they're dirty, if you grab the inside of the truck, it makes the inside of your truck dirty. Yes, I 100% agree with that. But also you gotta remember, for the last however many months here, it's been winter time. It's been really, really freaking cold. And I ain't taking my gloves off when it's that cold. I will deal with cleaning out some dirty inside of the truck every once in a while to keep my hands from going numb. So that is why in the winter time, you see me wear my gloves when I get back in the truck a lot. And in the summertime, you won't. I'll take them off. Okay. Come on. There we go. So now, this part's ready to lift, but we need to dump the suspension and chain up that front axle. So we're gonna go hop in this truck and flip our uh, suspension dump switch and this is an actual air switch not an electrical switch that controls an air solenoid so on this truck it doesn't matter if the keys on or off it'll dump the air just the same so now as you can see the airbags are dropping down and it rolls forward a little um, when you air up, trucks roll back. Well, depending on the suspension, see? No air. That's because the suspension is hinged in front of the axle and the bag's back here. So when the suspension comes up in the back, it rolls the tire forward. But either way, we gotta chain that axle up. So we're gonna go into here and grab one of our axle chains. I need to get a set of these for that other truck. But for now, I just use normal chain. So, this here ties up the axle so that when we pick up the truck from the back, this front one doesn't uh, hang down on the shocks. So that just goes down there. That one big hook hooks the axle. We bring this up here, hook onto the frame, and then we come over here. and we hook back to itself. So now when we come onto this side and we go up, this axle hung down a little bit until the chain there got tight and now it's holding it up. And uh, this axle is obviously held up by the wheel grids. Normally on a truck like this, like on the Zack lift or something, I would fork it by the U-bolts right here. But same thing, it's lifting it by the axle. And something a lot of people have asked is how come you don't have to tie up the other side? And if you stand up here and see, the other side is not hanging down because trucks don't have articulation in the suspension like normal vehicles do because they're made to carry an immense amount of weight up here and if they did they would probably just tip over so now that it is lifted up we'll pull out our strap we go over the tire hook onto our bar right here come back flip our latch grab our load bar here 
course. There we go. And then we tighten it down and it doesn't have to be that tight. It ain't going nowhere. Now we come around to the other side and I'm walking around just because I don't feel like climbing over the top of that thing again. One thing when you pick up the back of the truck, so you gotta make sure the bumper on the front has clearance when it dips down. This is a setback axle truck. Uh, some trucks are set forward axle where the axle is up here. They don't dip the bumper nearly as much as the truck with a set back axle where it overhangs. So that's plenty of clearance there on that one. There's some guys who get all super uppity about the axles being at the exact same height. It truly doesn't matter how low that one hangs down as long as it's not hanging from the shocks. So that strap winch slides over, over the top. And here's kind of the one goofy thing. These sliding strap winches are the same on either side. So on the passenger side, this is on the inside instead of the outside here to put your bar in, which would make it so much easier, but I haven't found one that um, is reversed because they're meant to be like on a trailer or something and not have to worry about that stuff. There. Plenty tight. So now what we'll do, put this back in here. We are going to need two of these. And then we are done with this compartment. So we'll come up here. We got to tie the steering wheel straight. And then in customers' trucks, I pretty much always uh, take my gloves off to put the steering wheel straps on even if it's cold just because i don't want to get their trucks all dirty so, start on the far side and then you gotta find great job i put this super cool seat base in here that has nothing to hook to okay you couldn't see anything on that side so we're just not going to worry about what happened on that side and do the same thing on this side around the steering wheel come down and hook into the seat base so it doesn't matter where the seat's air suspension up and down is. And we get over here onto the edge of that. Unless it doesn't want to sit there, then we'll move it. And then we take our seat belt and we loop it through just as a safety in case something happens with one of those straps. This does not need to be tight. It does not hold any bit of the weight. It's just if one of these fails for some reason, the steering wheel can only go so far for it'll stop. And hopefully that is not so far that the truck either goes out into the oncoming lane or off over into the ditch. I forgot my gloves. Next up, so we got to put some safety chains on this thing. And this truck does not have them mounted in the back so handy. Like the Zach lift does. So I have to come get them out of the box every time. But that's okay. So we're going to put you on that other side. You are going to come up here and just wrap around this. Now, a lot of people talk crap alike when I have to do a rear cross member with a safety chain. Like, man, if that falls off, it's just gonna rip that cross member out. Yeah, that's what I want it to do. You see, that truck right there has all eight of these tires completely locked up. And they ain't going nowhere, they're locked. And uh, if this were to fall off of there, the best thing that could happen in all reality is for these to rip something out and come off and this just stop wherever it's at it'll stop and it'll stay there and then i have control of this one to get it to the side of the road and stopped and figure out how i'm going to solve my problem if that thing is tied solidly to the back of this one and it comes off of there 
oh man, am I ever gonna be going for a ride? And uh, it's not gonna be fun. I'm probably gonna lose control of this one. So yeah, when you're towing from the front, like up there, and I have all this aired up where all the brakes are released and this is a free rolling thing going down the road, yeah, those safety chains better stay attached no matter what happens. From the back like this, I actually would hope that they don't stay attached. Is that the like, legal and legit way of thinking about it? Probably not, but it's the common sense way and that's what matters. So we're hooked to the cross member. We're gonna come under our tow bar, pull out this little keeper pin, just like we did on the other side. Just through here. And this is where you're seeing the user friendliness of that Zach West and how nice it makes things because you don't have to do all this. It would be nice to like weld some actual chain boxes in here somewhere off the back side of this to be permanent safety chains. So safety chains are hooked up, tires are strapped down. I'm gonna put the light bar on the front and the light bar is the only thing of the towing stuff I have on this driver's side of the truck. I kinda when I set this truck back up after it reappeared, uh, eight months later, uh, I set up most all the towing stuff on the other side so I didn't have to do anything on this road side of the truck when I'm hooking up to something. But the wiring was already there for the charger for this light bar, so it stayed there. I don't know why there's a zip tie on this, but oh well. Ooh, I got this fancy bumper to hook to. That makes it easy. So we'll do that. And we'll do that. And then, I wonder if I actually go to those top ones, I can just hook it right to here. Let's do that. Up there. And will you guys now, yep, perfect. They stretch down there. Put our safety leash on. That's that zip tie that I don't know why is here. Now we have lights on the back and uh, lights, steering wheel, front's free rolling, truck's front axles don't have parking brakes ever. So axles tied up, axles tied down, safety chains are on. This setup here is ready to tow down the road. All right, so we're headed up to Redmond. Go drop this thing off at a glass shop. I called them yesterday, just like trying to set it up for the future. They said, bring it in tomorrow. So that was handy, uh, especially since tomorrow, now is tomorrow, the next day. Uh, this truck is leaving to go to California and gonna be down there running around for a few days. So probably best to get that windshield fixed before you know it goes down there and runs through a bunch of scale houses and stuff. But uh, yeah, I was very surprised how quick they were able to get it. Especially Western Stars are not a super common truck, so to have that glass is, that's very handy. So we're gonna head up here, go get it dropped off. Yes, I could have probably gotten a ride from someone, but I am very independent and very stubborn. And this is a Saturday, so I don't want to make anyone give me a ride anywhere. So luckily I have tow trucks. If I would have still had the Zachlift body on the back, I could have just towed like my pickup or something up. But I had already taken it off to get ready to go to California with the low bed, so we just used the rollback. Okay, we'll see you when we get up there. Let's go get this thing unhooked. Um, we're just gonna, there's a glass shop right here. It won't fit in their shop because, you know, it's freaking huge. So just gonna put it on the curb right here and they're just gonna do it right here just fine. So get this off of here. And then this one does not have the external battery like my other one. This one, the battery's internal and uh, it charges when you put it in here, put it in, and then just plug in 
the charger and it charges off the truck whenever the truck's running. So every time you get somewhere, it's got a full battery. So now, we'll pop our safety chains off. What I'm kind of half tempted to do, if it looks like it'll sit nice and fine. Eh, it'll work. I'm just gonna leave them on there because I'm gonna come back this afternoon and hook right back up to this thing. So, it'll be fine. Maybe we'll like bungee cord those together or something. Okay, we can go out and down. Oh, I forgot. I need to pull those loose first. Because as you go down, the uh, this will work. Uh, the wheel lift rotates one way and the tires rotate the other, so it tries to squeeze them in there. So this first. Then we can set it down. The tires still kind of scoot in here, but at least they're not pinned in by the straps trying to do it. So, wind this up real quick. I say, if anyone knows where there's a strap winch that rolls this way, but is reversed, I would like to find it because it would be very handy. It's not a big deal like with this truck where everything's wide open, but when it's the front end of a truck on here and the bumper's sticking out right here, you're fighting under the bumper. Then it is a total pain. Okay, what well, we're doing. Now we can set this down. Alright, so we'll pull our two scoops off. Other one. bring this back here. Bring this up. All right. Now we gotta pull these in so we don't have spears sticking out the back of the truck. And I just bring them in some, stick this in here. And I put the scoops, oh, these things are heavy, just on their own. Um, I put the scoops on the last hole, pin them, close the gap, and then use the strap to hold them in place. Thrown in here, and then scoop. And our pin. Close it up. down.
Now this can go back in here. We gotta pull our axle chain off. Which is right here. And that goes back up here. Yeah, to go through this whole thing and make sure I have all the chains and binders I need for the loads I'm doing down south next week. Or by the time you see this, the loads I did down south last month. Because that's how YouTube works. Pop these off. Start this thing up. Let it build up some air. It's been sitting for a couple days. Now these things, well, they just no. Close enough. Oh, that's what I could do. There. You could ride right there until we get back. All right, we're, uh, I don't need to put the straps back in there. I'll just leave them in the other truck since I gotta tie it down later. We're like done. Just gonna park this right here and that's that. Check this out. Just got turned around and they're already on it. Getting some new glass for it. I'm gonna replace both windshields since it's here. That tr this truck here has one. That truck has two separate ones. Only the one is broke, but the, uh, they're both kind of sand pitted and stuff. So since they're here doing it, just get both replaced and it'll be shiny and clean. Just like this one. That's, don't worry about that little bit of dirt over there. Clean like this one is right here. Well, it is later in the same afternoon and they are done look at how nice and clear this is i had them replace both you know that one was all they were both sand pitted this one was broke but they got that done incredibly quick and with no notice like i called them at the very end of the day yesterday i think it's noon right now on the following day and it's done I, i'm very happy with that so that's a rimrock auto glass here in redmond oregon very highly recommended if you need so now to get this truck back home we're gonna do exactly the opposite of everything we just did to get it here <laughs> And we're back home. We got the low bed pulled out, hooked up, rinsed it off. Uh, this setup is going down to California for a few days to go haul some equipment and stuff around. Uh, hopefully I can find something to haul back to to make the trip really worth it. But uh, new windshields look so good in that thing. Got the rollback parked. Got the Zach lift here. This thing is all checked out, ready to go. See, I just keep a little solar maintainer on it. Keeps the battery topped off since this trailer sits so much. But either way, some people had asked in the past if the rollback could tow the Western Star. And yes, it can. The Western Star has also towed the rollback. And if the Zack lift was on the back of the Western Star, the rollback could not rear tow it like that. It, it, it would lift it and it would go down the road way beyond its ratings, but it would do it. I've done, it's probably doing a wheelie. But if this was on the back of uh, the Western Star, I would have to front tow it and that truck will absolutely front tow that truck with this on the back. So yes, my two tow trucks are both capable of towing each other, which is really handy. Either way, uh, I'm going to head out early in the morning, head south for a bit, and uh, see you guys next time.